Chapter 50 by Elie Wiesel, adapted version for educational purposes. At the entrance to the camp, SS officers were waiting for us. We were counted. I held my father's hand, the old familiar fear, not to lose him. Very close to us stood the tall chimney of the crematorium. It no longer bothered us. We were used to seeing this sight. My father didn't say a word. He was breathing heavily beside me. Father, I said, just another moment. Soon we'll be able to lie down. You'll be able to rest. He didn't answer. I was so tired that I couldn't think about his silence. My only wish was to take the shower as soon as possible and lie down. But now he was moaning. I can't anymore. It's over. I shall die right here. He took me toward a pile of snow. Under the snow were the bodies of dead men. Leave me, he said. I can't go on any more. I could have screamed I was so angry. To have lived and endured so much, was I going to let my father die now? Now that we would be able to take a good hot shower and lie down? Father, I yelled. Father, get up right now. You will kill yourself. And I took his arm. He continued to moan. Don't scream, my son. Let me rest here a little. I'm so tired. No more strength. He had become like a child, weak, frightened, vulnerable. His voice was soft. I screamed into the wind. But you will never wake up, never, do you understand? I knew that I was no longer arguing with him, but with death itself, with death that he had already chosen. Suddenly the guards ran toward us and forced me into the building. They pushed me inside without my father. To sleep was all that mattered. Chapter 51 When I woke up, it was daylight. That is when I remembered that I had a father. I had left him alone. I knew he was losing strength close to death, and yet I had abandoned him. I went to look for him, but at the same time I thought, if only I didn't find him. If only I were, if only it were, I didn't have to worry about him anymore. I could use all my strength to fight for my own survival, to take care only of myself. Instantly I felt ashamed ashamed of myself forever. I walked for hours without finding him. Then I came to a block where they were giving prisoners black coffee. People stood in line, fighting for the coffee. A soft voice came from behind me. Eliezer, my son, bring me a little coffee. I ran toward him. Father, I've been looking for you for so long. Where were you? Did you sleep? How are you feeling? He was very sick. I ran to the coffee like a wild animal. I brought him a cup. I shall never forget how he looked when I gave him this coffee. He was so thankful. He looked like a sick animal. With this small cup of coffee, I had probably given him more happiness than during my entire childhood. Chapter 52 Every day my father was getting more sick. I did all I could to give him hope. Suddenly he sat up in his sick lips against my ear. Eliezer, I must tell you where I buried the gold and the silver, under the house. And he began talking faster and faster, afraid of running out time before he could tell me everything. I tried to tell him that it was not over yet, that we would be going home together. But he no longer wanted to listen to me. He could no longer listen to me. He was tired. Blood was coming from his lips. He had closed his eyes. He wasn't breathing. Try to get some sleep, father. Try to fall asleep. His breathing was difficult. His eyes were closed. But I knew that he was seeing the truth in all things. A doctor came over and I asked him to please save my father. He is very sick, I yelled. I can't do anything for your father, he replied. The doctor looked me straight in the eye. Listen to me, kid. Don't forget that you are in a concentration camp. In this place, it is every man for himself, and you cannot think of others, not even your father. In this place, there is no such thing as father, brother, friend. Each of us lives and dies alone. Let me give you good advice. Stop giving your bread and soup to your old father. You cannot help him any more, and, are you, and you are hurting yourself. In fact, you should be getting his food. I listened to him. He was right. I thought deep down, not wanting to admit it to myself. Too late to save your old father. You could have two pieces of bread, two bowls of soup. It was only a small, it was only a small second, 
but it left me feeling so ashamed. I ran to get some soup and brought it to my father, but he did not want it. All he wanted was water. I didn't want to leave my father. All around me there was silence now, broken only by crying. In front of the block the SS were giving orders. An officer passed between the bunks. My father was screaming, My son, water! I'm burning my insides! Silence over there, yelled the officer. Eliezer, continued my father, water. The officer came closer and shouted to him to be silent. But my father did not hear. He continued to call me. The officer took a stick and violently hit him in the head. I didn't move. I was afraid that he would hit me too. My father cried once more. I heard, Eliezer. I didn't move. Then I had to go to sleep. I climbed into my bed above my father, who was still alive. The date was January 28th, 1945. Chapter 53 I woke up on the morning of January 29th. On my father's bed, there was another sick person. They must have taken him away and taken him to the crematorium. Perhaps he was still breathing. No prayers were said over his tomb. No candle lit in his memory. His last word had been my name. He had called out to me, and I had not answered. I did not cry, and it hurt me that I could not cry, but I was out of tears.